Welcome back. I hope you're rested and ready for the new season. I don't think we really got the most out of the team last year. The car didn't really improve as I would have liked. Let's try and do better this time. Hey, what's up guys? Arav here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2019 career mode, episode number 23 today for the start of Season 2 at the Australian Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the finale of Season 1 at last episode, then be sure to go check the one out before you see this one. But we're still here then in Alfa Romeo Racing for the start of Season 2. Emphasis on start because I said at the end of last episode, I need to see some rapid improvement from this team and I want to be able to fight for podiums. And if we're not, sooner rather than later, I will be looking at other teams if the team can't deliver but over the winter break we've got five upgrades coming in three on the engine side for the engine power the ERS and also the fuel and then two chassis upgrades there as well which should come in handy we've got a uh, pretty clear sky ahead of us for the weekend but away from those things the actually most interesting part of the start of this brand new season of career mode are the driver transfers the driver moves for season two and we've got a fair few and quite some quite tasty ones in the midfield for sure so kicking it off the bat at the very top there you can see Daniel Ricciardo has left Renault and he has moved to Williams to replace Weber and Magnussen has moved to Williams as well to replace George Russell. George Russell has been let go and so he won't be on the grid this year. So interesting obviously Williams were fighting us for the fourth best team on the grid in terms of on paper R&D and they were very much kind of right up there even sometimes faster than, uh, than us last year towards the uh, second half of the season there. So obviously Williams would have been kind of you know thrust into the limelight and want to try and build on this success from last year so it looks like they've you know basically done some lucrative signings in terms of signing Ricardo and Magnus especially Ricardo is the big signing there but obviously Weber was very good last year so interesting to see that he has been replaced uh, by Ricardo but that's a very strong lineup actually Ricardo and Magnuson and in that Williams car you gotta think how quick that was in a straight line Ricardo might be very good in the dive bombs here this season in that Williams car of his uh, for this second season Antonio Giovinazzi returns to the F1 grid of course, I effectively replaced him in Season 1. He's been signed by Haas to replace an outgoing Magnussen. And Sergio Perez moves back to McLaren. And Sainz has been let go. So Carlos Sainz, a big name on the F1 grid these days, has been let go. And he's not going to be on the grid this season. And Perez going back to McLaren. Obviously, it was a very tetchy time for him in McLaren in 2013. But a few years have now passed. And he's come back probably as a much better driver. And McLaren, a very different team to what they were in 2013. So that'll be very interesting to see. But it's kind of cool to see Perez back in McLaren uh, under their name. Lucas Weber, he was replaced by Ricardo, but he's moved to Renault. So effectively, Weber and Ricardo have swapped positions. Weber moves to Renault in probably a very weird move because Renault ended the season as the worst team on the grid of course after the patch and I don't think they would have improved too much into season 2 of the winter. I don't know, may maybe Weber just fancies a challenge every single season and is one of those drivers that is just, you know, a driver that gets the most out of a rubbish car because he did that with Williams of course and took them to some pretty lofty heights last season so maybe he's looking to th do the exact same thing uh, with Renault this year and then Robert Kubica moves to Renault and so that is very cool to see another kind of retro move there. Kubica back in a Renault car, obviously from 2010 we saw before that accident he had uh, that saw him out of Formula 1 for a good while there. So that's pretty cool to see him alongside Weber in the Renault car. And obviously effectively Kubica wasn't there last year on the grid because Weber replaced him at Williams, but he was still going to be a Williams driver. So basically both Williams drivers have moved to Renault essentially, the worst car on the grid. So you can see a bit of a pattern there, maybe in, some, in terms of the transfers. Uh, you know, personally for me, I've not had too many bonkers ones. Some of you guys have had some crazy easy ones, but so far, uh, from season one, where Perez and Hulkenberg swap seats, and now all these transfers, not too crazy, I mean, I think a big one's being Ricardo to Williams, I think that's quite a tasty one, and then Perez to McLaren, I think for sure, is also a really interesting one to see, but that's definitely shaken up the midfield quite a fair bit, but I kind of like in a way how the top three teams, Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes, haven't changed just yet, and you know, I think what... And I think eventually, once maybe I'm kind of in the championship fight, maybe I've moved to a top three team, potentially, or something like that, I think that's when it'll be kind of cool to see some crazier transfers in the top flight there. But I kind of like the fact it stayed the same right now, and there's unfinished business uh, in business for the likes of the Ferrari drivers, of course, against Mercedes, and then Red Bull, obviously. Well, we'll see what we can do with them. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that we're going to be near them. As we move on to the R&D chart, you can see, moving on from Season 1 to Season 2, the reset, if you didn't know, was the 
the aerodynamics department. Obviously, we adapted every single part of our aerodynamic tree, so we've gained uh, a decent amount. Also, uh, counting in the five upgrades we had over the winter, but the fact we haven't lost any pace with the aero means we're very close to Red Bull on the R&D chart. But you can see there's quite a gulf from, uh, from Ferrari to Mercedes and a bit of a jump as well from Ferrari to Red Bull and ourselves there. So almost kind of mimicking the real-life season, actually, that we're having right now in 2019. You can see, actually, there's quite a good fuel spread between Ferrari and the bottom uh, team of Renault, but then there's just an absurd gap to Mercedes. So very much like real life, actually, in a way. Then you've got Williams in P5 there, not too far behind us, actually. McLaren move up quite a fair bit over the winter, along with Toro Rosso. Racing point in the ones that come off the worst there, going down the trajectory, because uh, Renault do improve slightly, but they're still the worst team on the grid by a decent margin to Haas there, who are just behind racing point. So it's going to be a very close midfield, I think, of McLaren down to Renault, it looks like. Williams are kind of in no man's land, maybe a little bit too quick for McLaren, but not just there with myself uh, in Alfa Romeo with Red Bull potentially. Um, and I'm hoping, like I said, that this car can now improve. You know, we can do some upgrades over the next few episodes, the four, the next four episodes to be exact, to try and get to a point where we can try and match Ferrari and try and maybe aim for podiums. Because like I said, I do want to be fighting for podiums. And if we don't, I will be looking at other teams because I want to be fighting for at least minimum podiums this year, if not trying to go for some race wins, of course. But we're just going to really have to see how the actual real world pace is on track away from the actual what the R&D chart says. And, you know, basically how, how, how things kind of adjust with the different driver transfers and whatnot. I don't, that, if, I don't know if that's going to make a difference for us personally because all the transfers are in the midfield teams. But still, it's a new season. You never know what's going to happen. So we have to come into it with an open mind. And so with that, let's go to qualifying then and kick off season two of this F1 2019 career mode. We're just about ready to kick off today's qualifying here in Melbourne. It's the Australian Grand Prix. The competition is certainly heating up as we head into today's qualifying. Some impressive times showing up during the previous practice sessions. Anthony Davidson, do you think we can expect a similar level of skill to be showcased during today's qualifier? Well, I certainly hope so. The competition here is extremely tight and I think we might see some very close times today. Remember, practice isn't just about fastest lap times though. It's about optimization, it's about ratifying your decisions. No one's going to be sweating small mistakes here and there, but in qualifying that all changes. You need to nail that perfect lap or face the consequences. And believe me, that's a lot of pressure. Right, so moving into our very first laps then in season two in anger with this car and unfortunately it's an intermediate so not the best way to start off the season a bit gloomy and wet but uh, it actually will be drying out actually I think later on in today so Q1 may be wet but we might be having a dry Q2 and Q3 so just need to get through this basically and survive this session across the line though the first lap pretty horrendous P20 but I've left it late and I've actually fueled the car up for two uh, consecutive laps here because I knew that first lap wasn't going to be great of course uh, post patch there AI are much better in the wet now than they used to be, so no longer will we be able to gain, you know, what was it, like, you know, five car lens, basically, in traction zones, basically, during the race, and so in quality, things are going to be a little bit tougher, uh, as well as they usually are anyway, obviously, with the speed-up glitches sometimes at the end of quality, but we go across the line, and we just about make it through there in P15, so by the skin of our teeth, we're through into Q2, so not the best way to start the season, and the, uh, the, the first competitive session, really, by just surviving through into Q2 but uh, hopefully that's not a bad omen and it's just the fact that obviously getting used to the car once again it's the first time since we've uh, driven the Australian Grand Prix uh, since the patch so you know the high speed difference uh, you know changes how how you kind of maneuver the car around and also obviously it's it, I didn't drive the, the Australian Grand Prix circuit ever in the wet last year so we come through now into Q2 and thankfully it is slick tyres now you saw there I actually fast forwarded through the first few minutes of Q2 because it was still damp enough for Inters so right now every Everyone's lap times have been intermediate. I'm the first one out, I think, on slick tyres. So as we come through the last few corners, the car's been hooking up a little bit. It's still been a little bit damp here and there on the kerb. So it's not, it's not going to be an amazing lap time overall in terms of, you know, what you would say uh, someone can do around here. But relative to everyone else right now, it's actually the fastest of the session. But as we come through then eventually at the end of Q2, we're down to P4 now as the track starts to rubber up a little bit there. Everyone goes faster and faster. We've got a little bit of traffic ahead of us, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. We've got a little bit wide there. Raikkonen goes fastest now, showing some, uh, showing some pace in the car. Obviously, it doesn't mean anything. We just need to get through into the top 10. That's the only thing that matters there. Hamilton goes fastest now, and we gun to the line, gaining about nearly uh, six and a half tenths there across the line, and it will be P5 in the end, and we match Raikkonen. So myself and Kimi very close together, so that's good 
a good news for us. Obviously, that's where the car is at the moment, ahead of Red Bull, apparently. So we'll see how the top 10 shootout goes. But if we can be ahead of Red Bull in this session now in Q3, that would be absolutely amazing for us. But uh, we'll have to see. I have a feeling maybe Red Bull uh, struggle a little bit in those conditions. Well, whereas now it's bone dry, the sun's out, and it's, uh, it's fully time to now do the business and uh, drive as quick as we can as we go to the line now for our first flying lap in Q3. It's going to be P3 at the moment there. Pretty damn solid. P4 now as Gasly goes better. But a very, very solid marker to set down for our second flying lap here. And I think we actually could be very good here to try and get close to the Red Bull cars if we're lucky. Vettel at the moment behind us, but I, I would assume he's on a better lap uh, just being in the Ferrari car, of course. But we come through the last few corners. We've not really gained too much time there. Just about a tenth, actually, through the last corner. So it's not much, but fine margins will put us up into P2 there as we cross the line. Ten seconds to go in the session, though. But a lot of people on their laps right now as I cross the line and in the end unfortunately we're brought back down to reality crash down to reality and we're back down to P7 then so best of the rest behind the Red Bulls uh, Raikkonen unfortunately just didn't get a great lap in there I don't know what on earth happened to him he's behind the Williams and Toro Rosso of Magnussen and Butler Butler doing an amazing job of that Toro Rosso that much improved Toro Rosso from Abu Dhabi and then uh, over the winter break there so good to see finally uh, the other F2 rival of mine doing a lot better and kind of visible there near to myself uh, so to speak but to ourselves you know a little bit disheartened we eventually drop down to p7 but maybe our race pace could be a bit better against the red bulls we'll have to see but like i said we need to keep an open mind so let's just go to the race then and see how we do the atmosphere is heavy with expectation and anticipation and bearing the weight of that burden today is a place we know very well indeed it's albert park the story of the season begins here then with the Australian Grand Prix and it's time for the first chapter to be written. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. They're still relatively new to a sport which does have a high learning curve and, of course, little tolerance for mistakes. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Gasly, the engineer, Magnussen, Butler and Kimi Raikkonen, Ricardo, Norris, Sergio Perez and Hülkenberg. Albon, Giovinazzi, Roman Grosjean, and Lucas Faber, Stroll, and Robert Kubica takes the last spot on the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, so here we are on the grid then for the very first time in Season 2 in P7. Hopefully that is a good omen for the entire season. My lucky number is number 7. Strategy-wise, it's a one-stop on default, and I will be doing that this time around. We learned from last year that was the faster way to go around. It's 7 seconds gain there, even though we're on the hard tyres for a long time there, which isn't going to be great. Probably won't feel great, but the, the, the time gain, basically, by not being in a very slow pit lane at Australia is going to be quite great, and also hopefully getting some clean air, but I'm just begging the race pace is going to be good enough to maybe at least challenge the Red Bull cars uh, because like I said I, I want us to really use the end of last season as a springboard to really take the fight to the, th uh, to the top three teams but we're just going to have to see how it goes but let's not dawdle and waste any more time let's get into this end and go towards five red lights so the Australian Grand Prix the start of a brand new season here season two of F1 2019 career mode is underway as the lights are out in a puff of smoke from Verstappen there as well wheel spin from him we had initially a good start but then bogging down in the next few gears and it's going to be a massive Massive dive bomb for Magnussen to make some contact with Verstappen there. He's completely done Gasly, though, into turn one. That's uh, put off the Frenchman. So could we try and get Gasly now into the next right-hander? We're going to go the long way around. Very close stuff there as we get boxed in a little bit by Magnussen in that Williams, that new Williams of his. As we go down the inside, though, of Pierre, and we are up into P7 to get back into our grid slot, of course, because Magnussen overtook both of us there. Butler behind in the Toro Rosso, chasing behind. So let's see if uh, Butler will uh, look to embarrass Gasly, perhaps in the uh, junior Red Bull team. We'll have to see how that develops. So right now, it's a 1-2 for Mercedes. Shock horror with the pace they've got. Already on lap one, you can see the gap they've got. So this very much will be kind of like the real-life season right now. We're witnessing in 2019 
the Mercedes in the world of their own. Ferraris, though, Lion and Stern in P3 and P4. I think it's uh, Leclerc ahead of Vettel. Then comes Verstappen, Magnussen chasing them down, but we're going to chase the Dane if we can. But Gasly will follow us through. We're onto lap number three, then DRS enabled it, and we're close and getting some momentum and just general uh, speed into that turn one. So maybe get a good enough exit. We actually might even be able to get him, maybe without DRS. We slip through him, but he's going to go very cleverly defensive to the middle of the circuit. Doesn't leave me any kind of room to wheel around left or right, and so we have to just stick behind him right up his gearbox, pretty much pushing him through that next corner. A bit of a, a happy tail, though, on the exit. We hit some dirty air, and Gasly is going to use that to stay with us there as we, uh, all three of us, drop Butler a little bit, who is now defending from Raikkonen, I believe. So it's good to see Kimi is uh, doing well to pressurize that Toro Rosso and try and catch back up to me. But like I said, it is uh, Leclerc ahead of, this, uh, of Vettel right now, and both of them are just trying to do their best job of trying to chase after Bottas and Hamilton, but there's no use. The two Mercs looking supreme right now in one and two. Hamilton being the one in first place there but let's cut back to our action then as we still follow through Magnussen through the high speed chicane then getting a good exit using a lot of the curb there a little bit of a uh, waggy tail once again but we managed to wrestle it into a straight line and keep it going and so we're right up the gearbox again at the end of that back straight but nothing can be done yet and so we just have to follow through as close as we can in sector three meanwhile you can see Raikkonen there behind Devin Butler Butler doing a much better job at the very start of this season I'm hoping we can see a lot more of Devin Butler because we saw plenty of Lucas Weber which was great obviously but, uh, you know, Butler being the kind of dickhead uh, F2 rival we had at the very start in the story mode. Kind of a shame not to see him. But here we go. Back to RPOV then. On towards that number four. Little bit of a fake to the right. Then go to the left. Around the outside of Magnussen. But he does a great job to defend as he outbreaks us into turn one. So we're side by side. He's got a little bit of an advantage there as we go down at the back straight. Then towards the next right hand. I think it's three wide. Yes, it is. Gasly's down the inside. And so we're neck and neck. Absolutely insane camera shot there. But that means that we've gone so wide because Gasly basically forced Magnussen to forced me nearly completely off circuit there. Gasly down the inside of the nearly flat out right hander in the, like, the higher fuel conditions. Have a little lift off there over the curb. Go defensive though against Butler instead because he's caught us off guard now. As obviously that's really caught me off guard as we lose the rear end even more so on the next corner. So majorly flustered after that and maybe a little lack of grip as my tyres went really over the curbs on that right hander before as, uh, as Magnussen as I said nearly pushed me off completely off circuit with just the lack of space because that corner really isn't made to go three wide let alone it's, it's difficult enough to go too wide let alone three but uh, we managed to just about stay ahead of Butler meanwhile though up ahead is going to be Magnussen with DRS open there popping the rear flap and going for an overtake on Gasly it's a late not move to the inside there Gasly defenseless though as we go down the straight that Williams car has the better straight line speed in the corners though I expect Gasly to be a bit better but uh, Magnussen does enough gets the elbows out and he's up back up into uh, P6 I, th I believe that is then if my uh, counting is correct because Verstappen P5 and the two Ferraris three and four and this is now Vettel moving on. Very good timing here. Vettel pressurizing Leclerc. And Leclerc goes a little bit defensive there. So uh, really great timing actually on these replay cameras right now. Thank you very much everyone for waiting to, to make your moves in, in, in different sequences. So we don't have to keep cutting through and doing uh, proper replays here. We just watch the live racing as it is. And Vettel down the inside of Leclerc. And he's up into P3 there. And now we move on to the very next lap. This is now focusing on Kimi Raikkonen. The other Alfa Romeo car chasing after Devin Butler in the Toro Rosso. You can see the gap has finally been built once again to Devon there so I'm uh, eagerly now uh, chasing after uh, Gasly and uh, and Magnus to try and get them back and Raikkonen's made a huge move down the inside of Butler and Butler has made some contact then with one of the McLarens and that was and an end plate to come off there of Butler so that's a bit of a shame looks like basically Kimi first scared him completely off circuit in a way um, uh, the menace that is Kimi there in the mirrors and so Butler's been completely done and now we'll probably have his race wrecked for that unfortunately for him but now we move back to our race then chasing after Gasly and Magnus in lap number six just about keeping the car in a straight line once again on the exit and here we go Gasly goes through on the left we go through on the right so another three wide moment between us three we just can't help it down the inside we go with Magnussen we both squeeze out Gasly we're now neck and neck and uh, Magnussen keeps his foot in round the outside into the second last corner though he thinks better of it and slots in behind but brilliant brilliant racing once again between myself Magnussen and Gasly there two three wide moments in the in the matter of uh, you know three laps I think that is so great stuff there we go uh, very defensive, try and break the slipstream, go back to racing line, swoop through there into turn one and maintain that lead ahead of these two there as uh, behind. It's uh, now Raikkonen fighting the other Williams car of Daniel Ricciardo. I almost forgot Ricciardo was in this race in the other Williams. Uh, surprisingly, actually, Magnussen's been the one doing better in this race so far. 
are, but Ricardo does Raikkonen, and, and behind him, we've got the two McLarens fighting, Lando Norris and Sergio Perez, maybe the first signs of some uh, kind of maybe, uh, frosty fighting between the two McLarens, Perez obviously no stranger to some frosty fights in a McLaren from 2013 with Jensen Button, but Perez gets the better of Norris there, and he's ahead, but uh, look at that, actually that's quite, quite nice actually, so once again Perez is fighting a Brit in a McLaren, and it's maybe getting a little bit too close, we'll have to see if that continues on for the entire season, but a lovely to see actually, to be fair, in general, the two McLarens right up there fighting for some last points there because of course they were so bad in season one due to the pre-patch performance there so really great to see them right up there once again fighting for some good points uh, meanwhile now we move through this Grand Prix this first stint and Gasly now that is him down the inside of Magnussen but Magnussen keeps his foot in and just like with us he's managed to get around the outside and this time he does the move into the second last corner it's a crazy crazy move for Magnussen there in the Williams car embarrassing the red ball in that last sector we now move to lap number eight yellow flags up ahead there looks like one car might be able to go on Brie, and it looks like it might be Max Verstappen with a, uh, well, I assume an uh, uh, engine belly. Yeah, I was going to say mechanical engine belly. A mechan uh, engine belly, clearly, with the smoke coming out of the back of that Red Bull Honda. So his Honda's gone up in flames, and he's out of this GP. So a free position for everyone there behind me. And so we're up into P5 in the Australian Grand Prix on lap number eight. Soon time for our pit stop, actually, on this lap as well. But, oh, Sebastian Vettel's also out of this Grand Prix. Oh, I wonder if maybe they made any kind of contact. I don't know. Is that uh, just a coincidental engine failure for Vettel as well. I'm not too sure. I'll have to check that on the replay cameras. But we come in now on lap number eight. We're always going to come in on this lap, but it kind of works out better to come in anyway uh, on top of that because you never know. There might be a late safety car uh, for those stricken, uh, you know, Red Bull and Ferrari cars. So we'll see. But we were going to come in anyway. Uh, planned pit stop on this lap. My engineer was saying that just as uh, we entered that yellow flag section. But uh, uh, so we scrap on the set of hard tires. But I want to see a replay to see if there's any funny business between Verstappen or Vettel because otherwise that's a very, you know, coincidental, you know, double engine failure on the same lap there, so maybe the game showing it's, uh, it's coding a little bit there, unfortunately, on that lap with those two engine failures. Let's have a look now as we have a replay of Verstappen then and obviously he's just smoking away so he's going to go very slowly he doesn't park up though on that escape road right to the left there he continues on for some reason and then Vettel here with an engine failure so no funny business from the German or Dutchman there literally just engine failures on the same lap Vettel unfortunately holds up Leclerc quite a fair bit for the Ferrari team but uh, yeah just very very odd timing really and so with that mystery solved we move on to our outlap effectively here on lap number 9 we're chasing on to Hulkenberg in his racing point car of course this was a transfer that happened in season 1 not even uh, in season 2 here so we've uh, gotten used to Hulkenberg in the Racing Point car in this career mode so far. And we passed them very easily there with the Racing Point team losing quite a fair bit of speed into this season, unfortunately, for them. And now we move through on towards lap number 11. We're going to gain a few more positions with people in the pit lane, finally. And we're up into P12. We're chasing after Robert Kubica in his brand new Renault. And there's a bit of a train here going. And I think Raikkonen is part of that train. And he's not made a pit stop yet. And he's right there. So that's very odd. I've already almost caught up my teammate. Uh, and he's not made a pit stop. So I don't know what's gone. He's going so slow now into the uh, final sector of this lap. So I wonder if he's got an issue on the car. Kubica with DRS open. We go for a move on the left and follow through Stroll, who's making a move on Raikkonen there. So two by two, we go. Raikkonen very slow at the apex there. I think he does have some sort of issue. I don't know what, what it is quite now, but we squeeze through on the left-hand side. It looks like he's got some end plate damage, it would seem. So we dive down the inside. We have to make the move. Sorry, Kimmy. Barge past him because he's going to be so slow. And it looks like he's broken a bit of his front wing. And this is why a replay will show us. So this is actually flashing back to the lap where Verstappen had the engine failure. And it's going to be such an unfortunate incident here. Raikkonen just... Ah... Oh slams the back of Verstappen there but to, to be fair Verstappen shouldn't be there he should have parked up a long time before on that back straight where the kind of gap was in the wall and look at that no oh my god look at the racing we're seeing behind Raikkonen it's a three-way moment a double dive bomb by the Toro Rosso and the uh, McLaren of Perez there Perez uh, getting the kind of uh, dive he did at Monaco in 2013 out here in Australia in season two what a dive that was that was crazy I uh, love to see it, the AI being that aggressive. It's really great to see, but uh, yeah, just uh, really stupid from Verstappen there. And that's, that's cost my teammate, Bracey, any chance of any points in this race, basically. But obviously now focusing back on us in our cup, but we can't worry too much about that. We have to try and focus on our own race and just do the best job we can in our car. And we're uh, closing up to Lance Stroll now in the racing point. The second one this afternoon, we're going to overtake down the inside. It's a lovely little dive there, dancing through on the apex. Then we're up into P5, then Lando Norris in the other McLaren in P4 right now. I don't think he's uh, yet to pit yet, and uh, that will be correct as we come through uh, the end of lap 12 onto lap 13. Norris in the pit lane, then you can see in the bottom left on the map, 
And so we're going to be up into P4 then, which uh, was basically the position we were in before the pit stops, of course, because obviously Vettel out, Verstappen out, so we were in P6, gaining two positions up into P4. And so Bob's your uncle, we're there. Uh, best the rest, basically, because it's a 1-2 for Mercedes, Leclerc P3, myself there in P4, trying to do the best job now all the way to the end of this Grand Prix. Of course, we're going on the hard tyres, and behind us, there is a bit of a scrap going on between the two Williams cars and the Red Bull of Gasly, and that's Ricardo on the left going round the outside of Gasly, and maybe even Magnus and Ricardo now finally waking up in this Grand Prix, nearly a double dive on the outside there. He's uh, side by side with Magnus and still. That's going to be a fantastic move. He's pulled it off on the outside of that right hander, which is usually flat out and quality, and right on the edge of grip there, and he's made it work. Fantastic stuff there. Obviously, getting some energy maybe from the home crowd, of course. He is the home favourite here in Australia, and so he's up into P5. Magnus in defence against Gasly for P6, and those two will continue to fight on as they have done the entire Grand Prix. You love to see it. And uh, with uh, DRS coming up for, uh, well, I think the Red Bull car. I think Gasly should be able to get him back. But for now, it's uh, Magnussen who stays ahead. But Ricardo now is in clean air. And he will try and chase after myself, of course. And uh, we're just going to have to try and manage that as best we can. Like I said, the hard tyres, not the uh, best tyres in terms of feeling. But uh, as we move on through this Grand Prix, more fighting then. Surprise, surprise between Magnussen and Gasly. And Gasly finally gets Magnussen. And I feel like this is maybe the point where uh, Magnussen's tyres start to go off a little bit there. Because you can see on the on the medium compound tyres, the McLaren going around the outside. Actually, everybody just knows Gasly is also a medium. So those two feeling like the tyre wear is very good with their car. And Perez uh, dances around the outside side of Magnussen and gets him there and he's up into a very strong position for McLaren at the moment so like I said great to see though compared to their season one performances uh, pre-patch there but uh, uh, like I mentioned Magnussen may be getting some tyre wear I'm definitely getting a little bit of tyre wear and historically I've never been a fan of harder compounded tyres I always do better on softer compounds so when it comes to hard tyres and keeping them in check and keeping the grip up it just doesn't gel with me. So we move on to lap 27 or on towards it. And uh, Ricardo is now challenging and pressurizing me for P4 in this Grand Prix. Goes to the right. We go very, very defensive and squeeze him and then go back to racing line. Cut in there and force him to go wide on purpose there into that apex and switch back on him. And we're back up into P4. So cleverly driving that race at the moment here and keeping this P4 obviously this is a little bit annoying honestly to admit that we're going to probably try and finish up in P4 because that's obviously the max position I got last season and I said I wanted to move forward from here and yet we're just matching it so that's what I'm saying you know I need to see more improvements from Alfa Romeo we need better race pace uh, for the entire race long basically because I, I want to be challenging for podiums you know P4 is all well and good a few times but now it's just getting a little bit annoying that we can't be right up there but it's still great racing right now because Ricardo tries to go around the outside so it may not be for where I want but right now it is some entertaining racing nonetheless Ricardo once again tries and fails to get me and spoil the party but he's doing a good job to be fair because remember at the very start of this race I forgot he was in it uh, so to say he's recovered here in such a fashion to be fighting me for, for the best arrest effectively behind the, the, the Ferrari and the two Mercedes cars is really great for him and the team obviously you know good uh, good faith move in terms of the driver transfer. We move on to the last lap of the Grand Prix. Then Lewis Hamilton wins it. It's a 1-2 for Mercedes. Shock horror. Uh, Leclerc in P3 finishes the podium. And we are just going to finish in P4. As we go through the last sector. Ricardo unable to make anything work that time around. A little bit of oversteer as the uh, tyres start to go off even more so on this last lap, but we're going to see this through. Unfortunately, Raikkonen had his entire race ruined with that damage on Verstappen's rear end, so he's uh, out of the points, I believe, as it stands. So I'm the only one flying the flag, and so we're going to come through to the line to max our, uh, once again, our highest position ever in our F1 career here at the Australian Grand Prix. Can't complain about that one. That was an excellent drive. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave him the edge over the competition today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. Good day today. Let's have your take on it. Lucas flew through the pack in that race. What's his secret?
Well, I didn't really see too much of Lucas Weber, to be honest, in that new Renault of his. But I'm going to use this opportunity to actually uh, get a bit of a rep increase with our own team at Alfa Romeo with the, the answer on the right-hand side over there. Were you surprised to see Lucas moving teams? I wasn't surprised because obviously he did very well last season. But again, like the last answer, I'm going to use this opportunity to gushy up to my team and get some more rep increase with Alfa Romeo. Maybe try and motivate them a little bit more. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? I'll go ahead and compliment the aero side because I think we're going to develop quite a fair bit on the aero once again uh, at the start of this season. So we'll compliment them on the left hand side. Would you say that your rival is still on your level? Appreciate your time. So there we have it. That first race is done in season two. Raikkonen just misses out on the points in P11 there. Lando Norris and Sergio Perez. Double points finished from McLaren. Like I said, really great to see for their sake. Uh, obviously, the Drivers' Championship is the same as the race results. The Constructors, though, Williams actually finished ahead of us with a double points finish. Uh, so they're in third place there. Red Bull behind us and Williams and McLaren. Uh, you know, only one point off. But obviously, it's very, very early days. But it's just still great to see that kind of shake up there. But Mercedes reigns supreme still at the very start of this season I beg that Ferrari can maybe try and catch them and once again give us at least something to look at for the race wins in terms of the drivers championship if not them then maybe even us like I said you know some rapid improvements from the team and try and get into that fight but uh, anyways we move on then looking towards Bahrain for R&D upgrades gonna go for the minor upgrade on the aero side for drag reduction and also a minor engine upgrade as well on the ERS side because I would have gone engine power but I feel like ERS right now is going to be really powerful for us you know, just the ability to use hot lap mode and overtake mode a lot more often in the race. I can already tell it's going to be a big thing because I, I noticed that last season, so many times I was having to go to like low and none to save ERS because I used most of my battery pack and the AI were just absolutely gunning it against me. So I think ERS, doing development on that is really useful this year. I think it's a really good way to counteract how good the AI can be with their ERS management. So those two minor upgrades, hopefully, hopefully they don't fail into barring Grand Prix. So that'll be a nice little bump up and should see us actually overtake Red Bull in theory, I think, if I squint my eyes and look at that R&D chart there on the right-hand side uh, going into the second round then. But guys, if you did enjoy that very first episode of Season 2, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here to subscribe for weekly fall-on content, I've been Arifa. Hope you're just today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.